Hey guys, so another uh, thing I have to repair is, is my Sony Android TV player. Um, one of the issues I'm having with it is this high like squealing sound it's making when it's uh, offline. So I'm assuming it could either be a capacitor failure, one of the electrolytic capacitors failed, or it's a uh, switch and MOSFET failing, you know, when it's offline. Usually those tend to go bad and that sounds like what it could be, but it could also be a capacitor. So I have it off right now. I can hear, but I don't think the mic we have right now is sensitive enough to pick it up. So we're just going to dive right in and see if we can find out what the issue is. The fix it kit out. Just to, well, first of all, I'll take it off power. But these two screws on the bottom are promising. So, as we see the inside of it right now, so this little shielded area or protected area is definitely the power supply, main circuitry here, the big heat sink for the ARM processor. Obviously, these are just based around an Android operating system, so it's definitely ARM processor in there. They put a big uh, heat sink on there so they don't have to put any moving fans in there. So, but. Okay, so I definitely think it's coming from the power supply, so we're probably just going to go ahead and take that out right now. Seems like it's only held in by one screw. Just power. Just this down. So here's the main switch power supply for it. We have some electrolytic capacitors. Um, the transformers right here. Okay, so here's its little Wheatstone bridge. What looks like a fuse right here. Capacitors and okay. Well, the three electrolytic or four electrolytic capacitors that I see right now they're not domed up which means they vented from either I don't know, it's usually when the when the little cross are like like I guess like domed up it means that the capacitor vented everything that's inside of it so it's bad but I don't see that right here and looking around I can't really see what this is but this to me right here just seems like just a standard linear voltage regulator and so right here one of the chips I see right here is a 4N60 which is a high voltage N channel MOSFET usually these are good for having low drain source resistance and a fairly high uh, drain current which is why it's heat sink so I, I want to plug it back in, try not to touch anything live and see if that's what's causing the noise. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, I definitely hear it squealing. So yeah, this seems to be the issue right here. We're just going to unplug it before I kill myself. <laughs> but seems like a fairly well laid out board it must have just been a batch I got that I had a bad thing in it. but one thing I find interesting though is they still that they use PCB spark gaps right here these aren't I don't I only really see these on Sony uh, Sony products I've seen it on the PlayStation 3 also and I'll put a little picture of what these actually do but they actually voltage or current spikes across it well, it's voltage because voltage is across the load, but goes across. And one of the things I really dislike about these, from like um, EMI standpoint, these are atrocious. 
they just interfere with everything. So a lot of times when they're making power supplies, they kind of stay away from these because they're just so hard to deal with and all the harmonic frequency that they create. And just, oh, they're just not the easiest to deal with, but Sony still likes to use these. But for right now, we're going to cut to the computer and see the actual data sheet of this uh, chip and see if I have a replacement for it. All right, so you guys saw earlier that I found that the faulty chip was the 4N60 um, N channel high voltage MOSFET. It's a alpha and omega chip. So I ended up find, finding the data sheet for it. It's right here. And um, so these are a couple of things that we're going to have to look for when we look for a replacement in case I can't find this exact one. So one of the features is the voltage drain source. And this is 700 volts, which is a high voltage MOSFET, just like I expected it to be. It has a high drain current, 4 amps, roughly the same, and um, drain source resistance of a little bit less than 2.2 ohms, right around that general area. And actually in my little bin of salvage components, I have this uh, a 4 and 6 zero MOSFET that I could use for this. And it matches fairly well with this uh, IC's data sheet. Oh, that's interesting that one thing drain source voltage 600 here but it says 700 here. But the one I have is 600 volts, so it'd be a, it's going to be a perfect replacement for this. Um, uh, those are basically the only things we really got to worry about for these. Besides that, like the reverse breakdown voltage, and that we're not going to be really be that specific for it. One of the main issues is if the Drain source resistance is higher than that. You can get some. You can get some issues, but that's not here or there because the one I have is a low resistance MOSFET as well. So, and it's the same TO220F package as this one. So, we'll go back and solder it on. So as we saw from the data sheet that. This MOSFET, which I just removed the screw that it forces up against the heat sink, is a, uh, it's a TO220F package and it's a 700 volt 2.2 uh, ohm like uh, drain source resistance and it has a, a drain current of 4 amps. And actually, in my uh, little drawer of all salvage components, I have one of these exact um, 4N60 high voltage MOSFETs. And oh, this is it right here. So we're going to take this one, we're going to remove it and replace it with this one that I salvaged off of another board. And I know this one's good because the board I salvaged from was working. So I'm just going to just put in the helping hand. And so I'm just using a little crappy Radio Shack soldering iron. It's slightly, it's it's watts controlled, and I have it on 40 watts. I like it because it has pretty th high thermal capacity, so it's gonna make it really easy to desolder this MOSFET, and, and then I'll use my Heiku to solder the new one on. Because this one I don't really care if the tips get burned in that, because I just keep grinding it down with the sander and, and just. <laughs> retinning it. Yeah, so this one just slightly a little better to actually get rid of all this solder on it. Oh, it's getting loose. And there we go. That's why I like this one. Makes it simple. Let me just make sure there's no bridge. Let's see. Awesome, there's not. So, yeah, this is all done. We are done with this one. So, the chip came right out. That's no problem, this one. And then we will replace it with this one. And 
since they're the same package, they should be a good fit. Just gotta slowly push it in because of the solder. That's a good spot right there. But before we solder it on or anything, I'm just going to apply some thermal grease. This is a drawer of random connectors. All my drawers have random things in it. I'll do it on here a little bit. Just going to reapply some new thermal grease. Separate it. Now we'll just throw this new one on. I'll put the old screw back in. Thermal grease is making it hard to see with a hole. Okay, there we go. Thermal grease is just making it hard to see where the hole was. Now, so last month, while well, while we wait, we'll just turn the Heiku on. I'm gonna have this set too. Perfect. Now this is on. We'll put it back on the helping hands and resolder. So typically I usually keep the Heiku at 500 degrees when I'm soldering, but since this is attached to a uh, a heat sink, I rose up to 550 to um, give it a little, just a, just a tad bit more thermal capacity. So. No, so I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna cut the the leads off before I even bother. Sirens make it a tad easier. So the key to soldering, obviously, I'm sure you guys all know, but it's just, it's not heat up the solder, it's heat up the component to where it can melt the solder. Sweet, there's no shorts. This is on there good. I think it should be about ready to hook back up and see if we broke it. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything right now. Sweet. 
So we're just gonna put everything back together and just see to make sure that the unit itself powers back on. We'll turn off the Heiku. My favorite Saturn R never. This was that that the uh, Xbox 360 controller I built, the wireless one. Was was done with this side and iron. It was just such a nightmare. When you have the right tools, it just makes everything so much easier. I'll just go through this. Goes in like this. So now let's just make sure we still it still can power on. So once we plug plug this in, we should get a white light in the middle. That signals that it'll still power on. How about that? I hope you guys uh, like my video on this quick and simple and dirty uh, MOSFET chip replacement. I guess, you know, it was not really a repair, it was just a replacement with a salvage component. But I hope you guys liked it. Stay tuned for future videos. And if you don't mind, please subscribe. Thank you.